Greetings from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry. And today we are going to plant and talk about one of the most delightful and humorous and charming little plants on God's green earth. And that is the succulent family. The succulent family would include sedums and cactus. And succulent means exactly what the word implies. Succulent is juicy. And um, that is exactly what these little plants are. They, their roots, stems, their leaves are filled with water. This is why they survive so well in arid conditions such as the desert and rock gardens. And they're such a wonderful, versatile plant that they look so charming in walkways and pathways and climbing over stone walls. And today I am just going to show you a couple ways to use succulents because I have got to fill 10 pots. Once again, I have to change my beautiful <laughs> fence toppers because my geraniums did not like it on top of the fence posts. And so now I have to change flowers in the pots again. And last year the sedums did better than anything because it's hot, hot sun all day long. And these plants love that. So I sort of wish that I had never taken, the, taken them out in the first place. But I want to show you a couple ways to save money if you have to plant a lot of these at once. They're so charming and sweet. They come in so many different shades of green and red and, and kind of a greenish gray. And they're such comical and fun little plants with wonderful little names. This one is called Little Warty. Little warty. Look at that. Look at all the little precious little babies in there. And then this one is called, oh, Crassula. Okay, that's just given me the scientific name. But look at the shades of green here. We have sort of an olive green with reddish burgundy type tips. This is called Firestorm. I love the name of this one. It's one of my favorite things to eat. Key lime pie. Little slices of key lime pie. But aren't they just adorable little plants? Now over here, I just, I love these. They're sort of, they're an emerald green. They're just an emerald green with a lovely draping habit. And the name of this is Coral Reef Sedum. Here we have a variegated leaf, which is called Tricolor Sedum. This is really a good time to go and buy them from the nursery because um, most people buy them at the beginning of the year. By the time they get this big is when they're running out of stock and they have already grown quite a bit in the pot. And so you're going to get much bigger plants and these bigger plants are going to go a lot farther than those little shrimps because of the nature of sedum plants. Now let me show you what they do. These succulents will take root at any point right along this stem. So if you were to break this off and just lay it in the soil, it would actually root into the soil at certain points. And that's why this is such an easy plant to grow. And when you're picking it up at the nursery and, you, um, and any little leaves fall off, take them with you. You need every bit of this, even a little piece lying on the ground. Nobody else is going to want that. They're going to sweep it up and throw it away. But this will grow into a wonderful plant. And what I do, because I have to cover so much ground, um, literally, not literally speaking, but in all so many pots, ten pots, I buy these ground cover sedums. And as you can see, it's in a very shallow tree. It's actually meant to be placed right onto your surface and not even taken apart. It's just a nice carpet of sedum, just like that. And that's great if you just want to start filling a big section with nothing but sedum, but I'm going to take these apart and divide them to put into different pots. And the cost of something like this, this was um, a close to $18, for all this sedum, which I'm going to be able to split into different plants and use in all my pots. And here we have one. This was $12 and I have got six different wonderful plants. But the beautiful thing about it is if I need more, I'll just 
take a couple little pieces off and Ooh. pop them in the plant into the um, pot that needs this particular plant. So the fun thing is that you get to take all these lovely little darling sedums and create a little landscape in your container. So what I've done is I have taken my scissors and snipped out the bottom and now I have a nice little slice right here. Now I could take these, separate these once again Just like that. Very carefully. Don't worry about the little bits and pieces because you are going to save those too and you will be using those. You could take this, you could put this right into your pot or you could do a little bit more designing with this. As you can see there are already one, two, three, four, five, six different succulent plants in here. So they've already pretty much done the, the designing for you. It's a little bit of a haphazard arrangement and you can get a little more tidy than that if you want to. Or you can just pop this in with one of the more distinct little succulents such as this one. And I'm really not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I am going to have a good time don't crow throughout this whole thing it'd be really great but what you really want to do with your succulents is the most important thing is a nice lightweight soil so in order to make that soil ah I knew that such a thing was not possible that I could do a video without a rooster crowing but <laughs> nothing I can do about it but you need a lightweight soil and normally I would make a soil using three parts peat two parts sand and one part perlite but today I don't have any of those ingredients what I do have is some nice well-rotted compost. I've got some nice coarse sand from our creek bank. And I've got some vermiculite to take the place of the perlite. So I'm going to mix these in the uh, ratios that I described. And that is going to be our mixture for our potting soil for the succulents today. Working with this cast of characters here in these trays, we're going to fill all ten pots, also using those five little distinctive succulents and all the little bits and pieces that we have here. I'm going to fill ten different pots and try to make each one distinctive and different from the other. And that's the challenge with this project. Now normally I don't plant right into my clay pots on these finials because I like to switch the plants out all the time. But in this case, I'm going to leave the sedums in, I think. So I'm going to plant directly into my clay pot. So the first thing I've done is I've dropped some stone in the bottom, and that's for, that's for the drainage. And now I'm going to use my mixture for my succulents, which also has a little bit too many rocks in it. I don't need all those. I've already moistened the soil so that I don't have to water it for a while. And I'm going to start out with this absolutely <laughs> charming little fellow. And I'm going to pop it right here on the side. And as I put different plants in, I'm just going to fill in around the plant with the soil. And because I want a little bit of order in this arrangement, I've actually separated these according to their little species. And some of these, I happen to know, these, get, these can get pretty tall. So what I did is, they already were, I broke them off. You can do that. You just break it off, make a little hole in the soil, 
pop your little guy in there and that works out just fine just fine and I know that these are going to drape over the side this obviously is going to drape over the side very soon before you know it we have a couple that of course have broken along the way and I'm just going to pop those in the side also in a little hole these will take root even if I just lay it down in the soil it's going to take root but I do want to keep these together so I'm just going to lay these in and eventually there will be so many of them in here and they'll be draping over the side or they'll be standing straight up <laughs> in about a week or two you will be amazed at what happens in this little pot now this particular one does not take the frost so probably I will, I will leave the rest of these out over the winter it doesn't seem to do anything to these at least in our climate but this I'll probably remove it and take it in the house now you can just pop your plants in willy-nilly and it's going to be just fine but I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about design in this case and so what I've chosen as these main plants these are my main characters in my pots and those are these charming little guys that came in the single pots those are going to be my main focus in each one of these pots and I've only got five of these we're only going to be able to fill five pots I might have to, I guess I'll have to go buy some more I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do in the beginning and that's why I ended up with just these but in each one you can put them in the plastic so you can just rearrange things sort of like what you do with your furniture what I want to do is I want to combine uh, different colors, different leaf shapes, but making it also that it's complementary. So we want something also that's going to drape over the side. I really don't know how big this is going to get, but I'm assuming that everything is going to grow um, equally. And before you know it, this pot will be overflowing. But you can really stuff a lot into one little pot like this. But I want to combine this variegated sedum with this little succulent. And I have split that sedum into three parts. And as you can see here, this has a little bit of pink on it. Um, this is a grayish green, and this is sort of a grayish green too. So now I want something that's a little more chartreuse that's going to be in the back of that pot. Now this is just temporary. I just want to see what they're going to look like. We're going to say this is falling over the sides but I want something taller here in the back that might grow straight up and just accentuate this main plant I decided just to use three different varieties in this pot which is the variegated sedum which has the pink white and pale green leaves the key lime pie this is my focal point and then back here is this lovely chartreuse sedum I'll get the name of that before this video is over and then I just repeated the variegated sedum here now because these are newly planted and they're not filled in yet you don't know the full um, effect that this is going to have when it starts to fill in but it really will be very beautiful even though we are using the same plants in every one of these pots we're using them in different combinations and in different ways so that each pot although they're tied together because of the fact that they're all succulents they will all look slightly different from one another one another and they will all have their own little personality so that's what's really fun about doing this you can have a huge variety simply by using a tray of the same plants of already established succulents um, and I see a couple things here that I don't have in my little trays and I just might want to break a couple of these off and poke these in the soil in my clay pots and uh, look at these little red rosettes you just never ever get tired of the different shapes sizes and colors of this delightful little plant recently um, when I was in California visiting my little grandbaby I took a walk around the neighborhood that's uh, around San Diego and I couldn't believe the size 
of their succulents and sedums. They are simply enormous and they just grow everywhere. Unlike these little ones, the ones in California were absolutely huge, but they've just got the right climate for it. I'm just as happy having them in these mini sizes in pots. And you can see how shallow and small these roots are and that's why you don't have to plant these very deep and you don't even have to use big containers, deep containers. This is filled up halfway with stone and the rest of it is the succulent soil. You can also use a pencil or a stick just to poke a little hole in your soil. Get your little gal in there. And on really light, small bits and pieces, you don't even have to do that. If you look carefully at this, whoops. If you look carefully at this piece, you can see that there are already tiny roots coming out of that stem right there. And so you, with this piece, all you need to do is place it on top of the soil and it will take root. Now this bit here I had to take from another garden because I ran out of my main pieces, the focal point pieces, and so this is going to be my focal point in this pot. I couldn't resist taking some of those little red rosettes from that other plant in the potager and it doesn't hurt the plant when you take them. In fact, it actually probably will invigorate the one that I already had. But look at the little roots that we have here. And these tiny little, beautiful little things will make a nice little splash of red in this pot. So I'm just going to put them here in the corner. But I also wanted you to see these itsy bitsy mini sedums that are so, so cute. They're like teeny little teardrops. And when these get going, they just sort of tumble over the container sides and cover the ground. They're just so delicate and sweet. And I, this is another one. I mean, there's just no end to the styles of sedum. Isn't it marvelous? Two large pots here on the gateway. I want to make these stand out. So I'm going to do something a little bit different differently with these. And I might have to borrow some plants from another one of these gardens to fill these pots. My large pots that are up there on the gate, I'm going to take bits and pieces of this Autumn Joy sedum right from this pot. It's not looking too good. It needs a little bit more soil in it. And I have this all over the yard. 
This is a tall sedum. It also produces a beautiful flower, either white or sort of a dark maroon color in the autumn. And so I want something as my focal point, so I'm just snipping these off. I'm going to pull off the lower leaves, and I'm going to poke that right into my soil and my pot. The leaves that I dropped in this container will also take root. I'm going to put some new soil in here, though. This is looking a little crusty. Finished all but one of my containers for these clay pot finials, and I still have a few little bits and pieces left, which I will use, but the, just if you're going to do this, just keep in mind you want some of the sedum to be more of the cascading type that will pour over the edges and over the sides of your containers, and then maybe something more upright, and then a focal plant. And so I've tried to do that in every container. There's container one. Here's the second container. Now this sedum here will start standing straight up. It doesn't normally pour over the side like that. I actually think this is my favorite. This one was more of a waterfall look. It's everything in here. I ran out of focal plants, but I'm using this one in the center as the focal because um, when the, this settles in here, it'll actually be growing straight up. On the main gate, on the large pots, I did want to duplicate those. I didn't want them to be different from each other, so I wanted so something of a mirror image. So I used the tall sedums in the middle and a lot of draping sedums on the sides. It'll be a couple weeks before this actually comes into its own, and hopefully these will just be pouring down the sides. I think this one could use a few more little bits and pieces. Even though this whole thing will fill in, I might take some of my little odds and ends and drop those into that empty space. This is the key lime pie, the variegated sedum, and the one that I can't remember the name of. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think it's golden sedum. Now you only need to water these when they get dry because, as we talked about before, they store their water in their leaves. But they do like an occasional drink, so if they get bone dry, not even bone dry, don't let them get bone dry, but when they get dry to the touch, give them a drink. And right after you put them in, give them a drink to just settle the plants in. I finished all my pots and I still have quite a bit left and I've got a lot of these little bits and pieces. So don't throw away those little bits and pieces no matter how small they are. If nothing else, just take one and just drop it in between your walkways because these will actually turn into wonderful little ground cover plants. Here's a good example of what they look like when they, the succulents grow in between the cracks of your pavement and sidewalks. These have been growing here for a couple of years and they are just the remnants of little tidbits and odds and ends that I dropped in from previous plantings. And so today I took my extra tidbits and I put them in between these walkways and in the, between these stones so that they will do the same thing that this grouping did. And this is a gathering of more established containers of sedum and succulents. I also took some of my extras and put them into some of these spaces. I added that piece right there because it was empty. And I added a little bit here in the corner to fill this one up. But Hypertufa is just a perfect container for planting succulents and cactus. Or you can use something deeper Although the space will not be taken up way down in the bottom of the pot, 
the bottom of this huge pot is just filled with stone. So see what you can do with your succulents, your sedum, your cactus. I guarantee it'll make you smile because they're such fun plants. And they're so easy and you really can't kill them unless you give them too much water. From Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry and we'll see you next time when we will have another giveaway for a bird print. And that will be announced next week kitchen and today's vibrant bouquet is in a mustard colored pitcher which matches the beadboard walls of our kitchen. They look a little bright in this video I know but they're really actually mustard color. So the flowers for today are the beautiful blooms from the crepe myrtle. They've got wonderful buds and blooms. I wanted to match the yellow that is so outstanding in these flowers. I wanted to match those with the picture. And then we have the common, the magnificent zinnia. Many different little styles of zinnia here. But I think my favorite is this one here, which is called a, a lime rose zinnia because of that beautiful chartreuse yellow in the center. And then there's sort of a deep rose red in the very center and lovely rose-colored petals all around. And the butterfly is somebody I found in the windowsill who had already expired, but I thought that that butterfly would add very nicely to this bouquet.